From The Breakfast Club to playing Jeffrey Dahmer's stepmother, Molly Ringwald's come a long way from her start as a child actor. Ringwald was actually a singer before she was an actress, getting her start at the tender age of three when she appeared on an album released by her father, noted jazz musician Bob Ringwald. Her first acting role, however, was a walk-on part as a toddler in a stage production of Truman Capote's The Grass Harp in her hometown of Sacramento, California. This led to parts in more local stage productions, most notably in the iconic children's musicals Oliver and Annie. In 1979, she hit the big time, landing a recurring role as Molly Parker on television's Different Strokes. Let's all bow and kiss his ring. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ringwald's work on Different Strokes was so well received that it led to another recurring role on a Different Strokes spin-off, The Facts of Life, playing the same character, Molly. Sex, sex, sex. That's all the American public thinks about. Unfortunately, after a brief stint on The Facts of Life, she was let go, along with several other cast members. The rejection was painful for Ringwald, but as we know now, this only led to bigger and better things. Molly Ringwald was just 12 years old when she was fired from The Facts of Life. The show's original premise involved a boarding school for girls and featured a large cast of recurring characters. But then, for the second season, the producers decided to change direction and put more focus on fewer characters, which resulted in a large number of the original actors being let go. As Ringwald confessed to Entertainment Weekly, it was kind of hard as a 12-year-old girl. But in yet another dramatic twist, the producers changed their minds again, this time offering not only to keep Ringwald's character, but give her a larger role. But it was all just too much drama for Ringwald at that point in her life, and she declined. Luckily, she was soon cast in her first feature film, Paul Mazurki's The Tempest. We are noisy and pretentious and very, very nervous. Will you two quit it, please? Ringwald played the daughter of the two legendary leads, meaning her on-screen father was actor and director John Cassavetes, and her mother was actress Jenna Rollins. Only 13 years old, Ringwald's performance was skilled enough to earn her a Golden Globe nomination, and it led to star-making roles in three iconic John Hughes films, Sixteen Candles, The Breakfast Club, and Pretty in Pink. So iconic, in fact, that an upcoming movie, Why Can't I Be Molly Ringwald, is literally named after her. Whether gracing magazine covers, starring in hit movies, or rubbing elbows with other celebrities at New York fashion shows, Molly Ringwald was, for a time, the most famous teenager in the world. In 1986, her appearance on the cover of Time magazine accompanied an article that referred to her as Hollywood royalty, and it's true. Her roles in all three of director John Hughes's 1980s teen classics were iconic, propelling her into megastardom and cementing her place in pop culture forever. I guess the success of those movies were just because the, the characters that I played felt so out of place, mm -hmm. and they were always an outsider, you know, ugly duckling and all. Ringwald became lumped in with the so-called Brat Pack, a group of popular young actors, many who appeared in Hughes's films partied together, and occasionally dated each other. All would come to be known as the unofficial representatives of their era, popping up at the coolest restaurants and the hottest clubs, populating the gossip pages of glossy celebrity magazines, shielding their eyes from the paparazzi's glare. Members of the group included Amelia Estevez, Anthony Michael Hall, Rob Lowe, Andrew McCarthy, Demi Moore, Judd Nelson, and Ali Sheedy. Despite the attention, Ringwald stayed grounded, and in interviews from that time, appears wise beyond her years. We're all really incredibly honest. And when people are honest, a lot of interesting things happen. It doesn't happen that much. When the John Hughes era ended, Ringwald continued working in films like The Pickup Artist alongside Robert Downey Jr. and Betsy's Wedding with Alan Alda. But then, in 1992, to the surprise of many, she left it all behind and moved to Paris. Two years later, in an interview with the Los Angeles Times, she explained her motivation. Living as a celebrity in LA can really get you down after a while. Discussing why she moved to the City of Light, Ringwald said that she was longing for a normal life, away from the public eye. Telling the Los Angeles Times in 1994, I went to Paris a couple of years ago to work. I was just so happy there. The whole city just seemed alive. I wanted to see what it felt like living outside of America and get a different perspective. Living in Paris, Ringwald stuck to more non-commercial projects, including some French films that don't even appear on her IMDb profile. But by 1994, she started returning to the U.S. to work on television projects, including a lead role in Stephen King's The Stand. By 1997, Ringwald was back in the U.S. full-time, this time working on Broadway, taking on the role of Sally Bowles in the 2002 revival production of Cabaret. It is the second longest-running revival in Broadway history, with a talented star of the silver screen, Molly Ringwald, Wald currently playing the lead. But after suffering a foot injury in a national tour of Sweet Charity, Ringwald returned to Hollywood. By 2008, she had come full circle, playing the mother of teens on two hit shows, The Secret Life of the American Teenager, and later as Archie's mother on The CW's Riverdale. 
After her big move to Paris in 1992, Molly Ringwald met and married a writer, Valerie LaMagenier. By 2002, however, the relationship had deteriorated, and Ringwald filed for divorce. Soon after, Ringwald met the man who became her second and current husband, writer Ponio Giannopoulos. In Ringwald's book, Getting the Pretty Back, one of the more revealing anecdotes that she shares is how the early stages of her romance with Giannopoulos were mostly conducted over email. Married in 2007, Ringwald and Giannopoulos now have three children together. The oldest, Matilda, was born in 2003. The twins, Adele Georgiana and Roman Stilianos, were born in 2009. Matilda began modeling in 2017. Molly Ringwald is the author of two books. The first, called Getting the Pretty Back, published in 2010, was written as a girlfriend's guide to life, an advice book full of love, life, and style tips. The book was also peppered with personal stories from Ringwald's life, because by the time her book was published, Ringwald had a lot of wisdom to share, having been married, divorced, and then married a second time. Instead of trying to fix everything, just remove myself from any situation that is or could become toxic. Her second book, a work of fiction published in 2012, addressed marriage and betrayal head-on. Titled When It Happens to You, this novel told in short stories was generally well-received, and although the book deals extensively with marital betrayal, Ringwald told the Daily Mail that she did not mime her own marriage or divorce in writing it. Ringwald has also worked as a translator, translating author Philippe Benson's popular novel Lie With Me from French to English. Molly Ringwald remains one of the most relatable stars, someone fans consider a friend. A big reason for this is her active social media presence. In addition to her lively Instagram feed, where she shares photos of her family, travels, and pets, Ringwald also maintains an extensive website with lots of biographical information and childhood photos. And even now at 54, Ringwald shows no signs of slowing down. When The Secret Life of the American Teenager wrapped in 2013, Ringwald began touring the country with the band, singing, returning to her jazz roots. Ringwald also branched out into some brand new creative directions, including writing an advice column for the British newspaper The Guardian. In her first article, Ringwald addressed the question, was Molly Ringwald qualified to dole out life advice? In an interview with Flair, Ringwald explained, I've been told on occasion that I'm not always the best at taking advice, but I'm great at giving it. In an article published in The New Yorker magazine, Ringwald recounted several instances throughout her career in which she was sexually harassed and quite possibly assaulted. In each case, she attributed it to men who had power over her career. The first took place when Ringwald was 13, and another incident occurred in 1992. Ringwald describes an audition in which a male director humiliated her in front of a male actor. She goes on to say that when she told her agent, he made light of it. Writing about her reaction in The New Yorker, I fired him and moved to Paris not long after. Molly Ringwald is probably best known for her films with the late John Hughes, who directed her in three of his 80s teen classics. And while Ringwald has always expressed pride in her work, in the past several years, she has publicly addressed the fact that some of the material in these movies has not necessarily aged well. In an interview with Screen Rant, she describes how a rewatch of The Breakfast Club with her 10-year-old daughter not only made her cringe, but led to a lengthy re-examination of her entire collaboration with Hughes, leaving her struggling to reconcile her affection for the late director and the films they made together. On on one hand, she felt disgust at the misogyny, homophobia, and racism depicted in some of these films. On the other, she feels these films still have entertainment value, as long as it's understood they don't always accurately represent the way things should be. Despite mixed critical reviews and controversy, the Netflix series Dahmer, Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story, has also been a massive success, garnering almost 200 million viewing hours in the first five days. What many viewers may not realize, however, is that one of its recurring characters is played by Molly Ringwald. Ringwald plays Sherry Dahmer, Jeffrey Dahmer's stepmother, and Ringwald essentially disappears into the character. Series creator Ryan Murphy was so pleased with their collaboration that he's already cast Ringwald in his next project, the second season of FX's anthology series Feud. The latest version, Feud Capote's Women, also features Naomi Watts, Diane Lane, and Callista Flockhart, and will have Ringwald playing the role of Johnny Carson's wife, Joanne. Joanne Carson, the legendary talk show host's second wife, was a close friend of the writer Truman Capote, author of The Grass Harp and Breakfast at Tiffany's, among other classic works. Singer, writer, actress, mother, icon. Whatever the role, Molly Ringwald is always a true original, remaining, at the age of 54, as cool as her iconic 80s characters. We hope she never steps out of the spotlight.